PSI, which is on 31 bits actually, here. Okay, but represented on 32 bits. And then, this is fed as another input to this hash function. Okay, and then at the end, you obtain an output of 512 bits, which very interestingly is split in two distinct pieces. For example, if you know one piece, you cannot know the other, which is important. Okay, and one of them becomes the chain variable for the next generation. So kind of, you know, this chain variable would be, would be the same as here for the next level of key derivation if you want to have one. Okay, and then the left hand side, the left hand side is going to be combined with this k private by the addition mod q, where q is the number of points on the bit commutative curve. It's a prime. It's a large prime of 256 bits. Okay. And at the end, you get a, a number which you call ki. Okay, which is a sort of private key because it can be used as a private key, but it can also be used to be fed here for another yet layer of key derivation. Okay, so either you stop here and you use it as a private key for some transaction for this index i, or you can continue for carry on for an arbitrary number of levels. Okay, so it's a very, very flexible mechanism. Okay, so this is the left hand side, which is the private part. I mean, if you know the private part here, you obtain the private part here. Okay? And now, the way it has been done is such that you can compute the public key corresponding to this without knowing any of the private quantities. And this in bulk. So basically, you can do it for many different indices simultaneously. And this is explained on the right hand side because here basically imagine that we don't know this but we know this quantity. Okay, if we know this quantity we can fit it directly here. We know the index. So we know everything else. We know both inputs to our touch function so therefore we know the output and we know both side sides here. Okay, and now <coughs> Obviously, there's no way you can ever compute this quantity, ki. That's, that's not possible. But what is possible is to compute the kind of corresponding public quantity, which is exactly equal to this multiplied by the base point on the little curve. Okay? Which I call ki in green, which is the, you know, the public part, and the, 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 the thing in red is the secret part. Okay? And this is done due to the homomorphic property of the elliptic curve. Okay, so basically the fact that this addition mod Q translates when you multiply everything by the point elliptic curve, translates into the addition of two points on the elliptic curve. Okay, uh, the enabler here in this key management scheme is the, is the homomorphic property of the elliptic curve. If, if in Bitcoin we would have another uh, digital signature scheme, not ECBSA, this would not work so easily. Okay? You need a digital signature scheme with this sort of homomorphic property. Okay? So you see that if you want to do Bitcoin, you could maybe use any, any digital signature scheme and actually not even need a digital signature. Okay? Vitalik Buterin have um, discovered first and later there was a paper by Bono showing that actually the whole of Bitcoin could be built without using any public cryptography whatsoever. You could just use hash functions. So potentially Bitcoin could work without public cryptography. But now, this is not the practical need. The practical need is to have Bitcoin with key management. Because it's practical, because we want our friends at Trezor to have this fancy app. Okay, okay. So the, there is this necessity for having an auditable key management scheme inside Bitcoin. Okay, and then your choice is much more restricted. <coughs> very, very few digital signature schemes actually can be used anymore. Uh, there are very few left, which would have this sort of uh, homomorphic property which allows this. Okay, so um, 
So we, we use this specific homomorphic property here, and basically well, we obtain the same left-hand side of y, and then before this addition we multiply by the base point on the root curve, and you can verify very easily, due to the homomorphic property, that this is the so-called right key in the sense that it satisfies this equation. It's equal to this quantity ki multiplied by the base point on the root curve. Okay? So we obtain the right quantity, but we don't reveal the right quantity. Okay? So this is like an auditor's process, because the, you can give this quantity k public and x chain, which actually the x chain is the same as here. It must be the same. So it's an additional secret of 256 bits, which is not bad. Okay? You give this to an auditor in a bank, Okay, and for every index i, or for any path, because we can do it across several levels, for any path, he can recompute the public key of every user and also for every individual transaction. Because in practice, if you use the electronic covers, also for every individual transaction, you will choose a distinct path in your tree with different set of indices to generate a unique. Um, uh, uh, key for your transaction, you need address for a transaction, okay, um, in order to have better anonymity and to avoid uh, the attacks on the Bitcoin with the curve, which as everybody knows is a super dodgy with the curve, okay, so it's better not to publish your, your um, uh, public key ever, okay. So therefore, this is really a very, very practical thing to do. And an increasing number of people in Bitcoin do it. I mean, I don't know what is the market share of this solution in Bitcoin, but it's up to 100% in volume. Okay? I mean, a lot of people use this. We don't know exactly. Okay? So, it's, it's, the, it's the only practical way of doing Bitcoin. Okay? It's using this sort of key management scheme. And it's not a trivial key management scheme. I mean, you cannot just replace it by any other key management. Um, another one, if you invent it, it will be very similar to this one. Okay. So Bitcoin is in trouble because, for practical reasons, it has actually greatly degraded the security because these schemes are not very, very secure. They are theoretically secure. They can be secure under the right circumstances. But they are excessively fragile, as is, it is explained in our paper and we will explain a little bit. Okay. Um. <coughs> so obviously Ledger, like everybody else, also implement B B zero for the two. Everybody does. Okay. However, Ledger are protected because they implement RFC six nine seven nine. Okay. Uh, RFC six nine seven nine is a spec written by Thomas Pohan. Okay. I know Thomas Fona quite well. He was at the university with me a long time ago. And um, this is a uh, standard method of doing a deterministic signature, which depends on the private key and on the message to be sent in a fully deterministic way. So if you sign it as the, the same message twice, you obtain always the same signature. And that's more or less the only way to protect yourself with from actually things which the previous speaker have told you about. Wrong developers, backdoors, okay? Well deterministic signatures protect you against cover channels, you know, that the drop developer could use. Okay? And deterministic signatures can be verified by another device. You could have two signing devices, two, two signing devices. As both of them compute the signatures, compute the signatures, compare the signatures. Okay? It could be independently validated, sometimes or maybe even always. Okay? So you could have a, maybe you could have two Trezor devices, which actually it is possible to configure Trezor devices to have the same keys, the same with the French system by the way. And you could, uh, as an additional check, use two distinct devices or maybe two different employees to generate digital signatures, and because they are deterministic, check that they are identical. Okay? Uh, so in this way, you are protected against 
what is maybe the easiest way to embed bundles like for the NSA or developers who want to compromise the security of your business, okay? Which is using the bundle random methods, okay? So the deterministic signature is a tremendous. But strangely enough, our honest thief did not recommend that. He recommends HD wallets, okay? Doesn't he know that HD wallets makes the problem much, much worse? Maybe it's very, I, I maybe, very bizarre. I mean, maybe he does. Maybe he thinks, well, next time I, I'm not going to grab all He wants to steal more. Yeah, yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Or well, maybe it's a marketing stuff. I mean, if you read about this on the internet from various expert opinions, you will see that everybody recommends this. Is this is the definite fix for all these problems of web okay. Well, not everybody. Our anonymous thief has a different idea. Okay. <laughs> Very bizarre. Okay. Uh, so another system um, which uses uh, HD wallets is CoinKite. CoinKite is a solution in which the company sells smart cards and these terminals. They, they sell both things. Okay? Um, so this is very robust because the, 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 this device has an HSA, hardware security module. Okay? So here you can protect your business both against ordinary hackers but also against hackers which sit at the merchant stuff. Okay? But it's very, very and mature the system. However, okay, actually, recently the uh, key crypto and security uh, developer who is responsible for this, Peter Todd, came to my seminar in London and actually told me, no, it's me. <laughs> okay? so, but strangely enough, what they do there is that in this system, from day out of time, each new member receives a welcome email which contains the XPUB key extended public key for their deposits. So basically in CoinKite system, they send this whole thing by email. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Including the exchange of 250 bits, you should be sick. Okay? This is really, really bad. Really, really bad. But okay. is that uh, because the marketing department doesn't understand uh, the, the security side? Uh, not exactly, you know, they, uh, they obviously do it for just one device, okay, so like for one small company. They don't do it at the larger level, because if you do the same for a larger domain, which you know, um, in which you have many different subdomains and so on, it's going to be much worse. Um, so the damage is potentially limited to one single company, but each of these companies are being sent this thing by email. And this is really, really bad. So this means that the attacker who intercepts this email and can guess this indices or paths in the application. So you know, sooner or later he will guess how application is configured. You know, maybe there will be some, um, you know, the, it's, it's it's something which in theory could have referred to one of with entropy and there could be several levels. So in theory it could be an additional secret which thwarts the attack. But in practice, it has very low entropy due to some practicalities and the way the application has been designed. Okay, so we can count on okay. So the attacker, for any in this and, and, and potentially for any other number of levels in a key derivation tree, is actually able to compute the public key for everybody. Which is maybe okay. You will tell me, okay, so what that I can know so the public key, we, we don't care. Now, actually, the attacker can do much, much worse than this. Much, much worse. We should observe that basically, actually, the attacker will know for any pair of public keys their difference, okay? And he will know the difference between one private and one private for another uh, derivation. And actually, he knows the, of these original values. Actually, he does not only know what, ha what, what comes here, but he knows all the original values Y prime, the attacker. Because he knows the, you know, the, the auditor keys. So if the attacker knows the auditor keys, which are being sent by email by some people, okay, 
he can compute these values for everyone. And these values actually determine algebraic relations between linear algebraic relations within private keys. So the attacker still does not know ki for one user. But actually it's easy to see that he can compute the difference between ki i and ki j for any pair i and j. So he can get the master private key? No. Actually he cannot do that. He cannot ever get the master private key. But he knows a lot of linear equations between private keys. And actually he does not even get to know any private key or not yet. He just knows that uh, k of Alice minus k of Bob is equal to a quantity which is known to him. Things like that. Okay? So this alone is not a problem. I mean, you could actually do a security proof for the system to show that it is probably secure. Attacker just knows differences between the keys, but he doesn't know the keys. Okay? But this sort of systems are excessively fragile. Okay? So attacker knows a lot of interesting equations on the keys, and now imagine that attacker will just add to this pool of equations just one single equation which comes from another source. And then actually it's possible to see that everything collapses. He will recover all the private keys for every single user. And, but still know that the parent extended private key. He just will know the keys for all the users and all the users. The private keys. Right. So he will steal bitcoins from everybody. But he will still know not to know this parent extended private key. So that's, uh, that's interesting. Okay, so um, CoinKite, not a good security practice. <laughs> okay. So um, a little bit more about this. So again, the fix is RFC 6979. However, for people who have not applied it, you should be scared about our data. Okay, in particular for cold storage solutions, which was also what the previous talk was, was, was a lot about. Okay. So I have a picture here which shows RFC 6979. It's very complicated. Okay. It has many applications of HMAC. But um, it's not so important how exactly it's done. Okay. Um, here's a short summary of which systems are affected. Okay. So, there are companies which are safe. Trezor, Multibit, Electrum, for example. Okay? So, uh, the only reproach I have to Trezor is that they don't do side channel attack uh, protection. Okay? But otherwise, they are very, very good. Okay? Uh, but, some major, of the very major companies in Bitcoin are not protected or have not been until very recently. So blockchain.info, what happened a few weeks ago? It, it has happened, you know why? Because they have actually started patching this and made it much worse in the other process. <laughs> this is what really happened. <laughs> okay. Um, Bitcoin Core, the patch was applied like mid-December actually. But they have only changed at this moment the signature generation. But still, a lot of people are using the older version of Bitcoin Core, so it's still not patched for the majority of users. Because a lot of people are just running the old version, you might say. Okay? So it has been somewhat patched, but not very well. Okay? So, the, so, and this is very, very bizarre, because in Bitcoin Core, the fix was submitted and approved 18 months ago, and for some reasons which nobody could really explain to me, it has not been applied. It was there for 18 months. Okay. <coughs> so I'm going to switch slides now. How many more, more minutes I, I have now? Uh, Sorry? Uh, some more words. Except, except, except. Oh, okay. 
So I'm not going to give you a lot more technical um, uh, particulars about these questions. Okay? So I'm going to uh, move towards some concluding remarks and try, try to summarize a little bit uh, uh, what you know about Bitcoin. Okay, so this interesting question, like, is Bitcoin improving? I have had extremely hard time to say publicly anything about Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin community has a mentality of never ever talking about serious problems and in addition many people like journalists involved and Bitcoin um, specialists who speak at conferences they clearly lie and cheat to the public because I have informed these people about some serious events and they don't relate okay and they clearly don't want to talk about serious problems because it would be bad publicity for Bitcoin Okay? And they very clearly don't want to talk about security problems before bad things happen. So there is a tendency to say, okay, well, uh, 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 if something bad happens, we will fix it. This is not the right approach. Okay? This is not responsible to fix problems only after they become very, very serious. I mean, I have presented to you for you today a glimpse of some very advanced attacks which are combination attacks there are lots of such, such attacks, believe me uh, what we see in the blockchain is again a tip of the iceberg there are lots of events there which are not visible in the blockchain but allow people to steal bitcoins and particularly particular events have not been discovered yet but they are already there okay. and it's, it's, it's trouble in the making the trouble is in the making Every, every minute as we speak. So security has to be done preventively. And this spirit is totally lacking in Bitcoin community of doing preventive security engineering. Okay, so I will tell you a little bit more now about preventive security engineering. Yes. Uh, did you have this presentation before? I think so. Huh? Uh, I have already said this thing, some of this thing before. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the question is Bitcoin is Bitcoin improving? Is it trying to improve? Okay, I have heard this rumor like, okay, but you know there's only one active